Let me show you how to blur backgrounds in Photoshop. Link in the description to download the sample file. First, make two duplicates of the background image. You can do so by pressing Ctrl J on Windows or Command J on the Mac twice. Now, let's create a layer that only contains the model without the background. We'll use the topmost layer for this. I'll rename it and call it Model. Then disable the other layers by clicking on their corresponding eye icons. And go into the Properties panel and click on the Remove Background button. This command will apply a mask around the main subject to hide the background. It utilizes artificial intelligence called Adobe Sensei. It's not a perfect layer mask, but that's okay. You can always come back and fine tune the details later. Next, we will need a layer with only the background without the model. Utilizing separate layers to create the background blur will avoid ghosting and keep everything editable. Start by enabling the visibility and activating the bottom layer. To stay organized, I'll rename it to Blur. Then select the model by holding Control on Windows, Command on the Mac, and clicking on the layer thumbnail to load the mask as a selection. I'll select the Zoom tool and zoom into the image. Notice that the selection's edge is right on the model. To avoid ghosting when you blur backgrounds in Photoshop, you need to make sure that you include every pixel of the model within this selection. To ensure that you do, you can expand the selection by going into Select, Modify, and choose Expand. In this case, you can expand the selection by 5 pixels, but experiment with other values, you may need a larger or smaller expansion depending on your image's dimensions. I'll press OK, and you can see the results. The selection edge is now 5 pixels away from the model's edge. Try to create a similar gap in your projects. I'll double click on the hand tool to fit the image to screen. With both the selection and the blur layer active, go into Edit and choose Content Aware Fill. The Content Aware Fill will analyze the image and create a fill based on the content around the selection. It will create the illusion that the model is no longer there. It's okay if your foreground removals are not perfect. The imperfections on this area with grass where the tree should be will not be noticeable in the final image because the model's body will cover it. Just make sure that no parts of her body remain outside the fill. In this case, the default settings look great. So I'll output to the current layer and press OK. You can press Ctrl D on Windows, Command D on the Mac to deselect. With each element in a separate layer, we can now create realistic background blurs in Photoshop that are editable and offer great flexibility. Before applying the blur, right-click on the layer and convert it into a smart object. A smart object is a container that allows you to apply non-destructive adjustments, distortions, filters, and transformations, which means you can always come back and make changes to the background blur. Then go into Filter and choose Neural Filters. Look for the Depth Blur filter and click on it to enable it. Photoshop will analyze the image and blur the background based on the content. If you were to apply this filter to a single layer, Photoshop will detect the main subject and create a blur around it. Unfortunately, doing so doesn't always give you the best results. Notice the ghosting it applies to the edges of this image. Also, you have no ability to edit the content independently. This is why I recommend blurring backgrounds in Photoshop using two layers. Since Photoshop has no main subject to detect, you might need to manually add the focal point by clicking on the preview window where the background should be in focus. In this case, it's the area where she's standing. Everything behind her should gradually get blurrier as you go further into the background. Once you set the focal point, you can adjust the focal range. This is the range from the focal point that will remain in focus. A larger range will have more pixels in focus, and a shorter range will have fewer pixels in focus. In this case, I want a more dramatic effect, so I will keep the focal range at zero. The blur slider controls the intensity of the blurriness. One of the great things about the depth blur filter is that it creates a realistic bokeh effect as you blur the image. I think it looks fantastic. Obviously, the best blurry backgrounds and the best bokeh are the ones that you get in camera. But if you don't have the right equipment or if you're working with somebody else's images, then this filter is a great alternative. The depth blur filter also gives you sliders to add haze, adjust temperature and tonality, as well as a grain slider to add noise to blurred pixels. These sliders are all great controls, but generally speaking, I like to add these effects using camera raw or adjustment layers because they offer more control and flexibility. But of course, feel free to experiment with them in your projects. When you're done, output to a smart filter and press OK. The image looks fantastic, but don't stop the video just yet. I would like to share a few more important techniques with you in the next few minutes to improve this background blur. 
And also, please click on the like button now if you have enjoyed the video so far. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to edit the blur, you can double click on the Smart Filter label. No need to do that in this case, but you probably will need to edit your layer mask. Remember, when you paint on a mask, black hides pixels and white reveals pixels. You can paint with white on this mask to reveal the original image and remove the weird stroke under her feet created by the content aware fill. You could also paint with black to hide pixels from this layer and reveal the blurry background behind it. For example, you could paint away the uneven edges on her dress. Here's a nifty keyboard shortcut for you. If you click once and hold the shift key, and click again, Photoshop will draw a straight line between those two points. You can use this technique to fine tune the edges of your subject. Oftentimes, it will be challenging to select and keep the original hair in your photos, so you will need to instead paint in digital hair to keep a more natural and realistic look. I created this brush that paints in strands of hair with just one click. All you need to do is create a new layer below the model layer and select a color that is similar to the model's hair. And this is my result by clicking just once. As you can see, this simple layer adds a lot more realism to the composite. If you want to download this brush and see how it was created, check out the links in the description. You can now apply a global color correction adjustment to make this image more impactful. To do so, select your topmost layer, then hold shift and click on the bottommost layer to select all the layers. Then right click and select convert to smart object. To stay organized, I'll call this smart object blurring effect. Then you can go into filter and select camera raw filter. From here, you can treat the background blurring effect as a single photo and apply adjustments to temperature and to tonality, as well as increase vibrance to increase the saturation of low saturated pixels. Of course, you can apply any other adjustment that will help your image, but no matter what adjustments you make, remember to go into the effects panel and add grain. When you blur backgrounds in Photoshop, you will create a soft, smooth look that can look very digital and unrealistic. But by adding just a tiny amount of grain, you can make your images feel more natural. By the way, make sure to check out my video on changing backgrounds in Photoshop. I'm sure you're going to love it as well. My name is Jesus Ramirez. Thank you so much for watching.